Mr. Demonency asks, how long did it take for you to perfect your squat technique? All right. So this is, uh, I'm going to be making a video about this soon, kind of my squat story, or maybe my road to a 500 pound squat. I think it'll help a lot of you guys. Um, so I'm not going to go totally in depth, but pretty much my squat story was in middle school, I had met the local high school football coach. And the second I met him, I said, I really want to impress this guy. And I really, really want to play football. I was playing peewee football all the time. And in school, in middle school, I had to do a biography on Walter Payton. And in the uh, book, he talks about the, the importance of strong legs. So I knew, if I want strong legs, I need to get to squatting. Um, so I, I was in the gym four or five days a week, squatting my ass off. Um, I didn't, I didn't have access to the internet, so I didn't, I didn't know any, I didn't follow any programs. I didn't know you should squat this many times a week or that many times. You should do this when you squat. Um, I just squatted as often as I could, um, and uh, never really tested my one rep max. It was always just more reps. Um, I would put, you know, some weight on my back. I would say, I want to see if I could do this for 20. I want to see if I could do this for 25. Um, just totally fatigue my legs. But anyways, that's that's all part of the story. Um, so I started squatting when I was in middle school, and when I was in uh, high school with that same football coach, he knew the importance of uh, squatting and front squatting, cleans. So we would do squats, front squats, and cleans four days a week, um, hill sprints. Uh, and after that, I would go to the gym and I'd squat more. Um, so I never really had a problem with my squat technique uh, because I was doing it so often, but it wasn't until recently, probably four or five years ago, that I actually started to learn how to squat correctly. Um, certain things like your upper back and stance and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I've always been squatting low, so mobility was never really an issue for me. Um, but, so anyways, I've been squatting for a long time. All right, Will Atima asks, do you incorporate pull-ups, chin-ups, are they good assistance exercise for the main lifts? Yes, absolutely. I do pull-ups and chin-ups, uh, either or. Pull-ups, chin-ups, neutral grip pull-ups. Uh, body weight, weighted. I do it two times a week, sometimes three. Um, I've noticed in the past when my bench press was the highest, um, at that same time, I could do a weighted pull-up with the most weight that I've ever done before. I was like a little over 250. Uh, I could do reps with a 45-pound plate. That's almost 300-pound pull-ups uh, for reps. Um, and my bench was the highest it's been. Whether that was a coincidence, maybe, but I think there's something to it, so. All right, Sanjith Nadu, what's your point of view on supplements? Which ones work, which ones don't? Um, I already touched on this earlier, um, that you don't need supplements. Um, sure, they help a little bit, but you don't need them. Sleep, proper training, and food are number one. Supplements help a little bit. Um, but as far as which ones work, the only ones that actually do anything would, I, would be protein because it's calories, it is a food supplement, calories, protein. Um, so protein powder actually works, I guess you would say. Um, any pre-workout, because the point of pre-workout is to get you going um, and it all has caffeine in it, so it is a stimulant. So pre-workouts do work. Um, and then I would say creatine, creatine works. Um, I don't know how much stronger it really makes you, but I know that it helps putting on weight, uh, which can uh, increase your strength. So protein powder, uh, pre-workouts, and creatine, I guess, were the only ones that actually work. Roman Smart asks, hey, Alan, you're looking untamed as usual. Could you please do a video about alcohol and its effects on training? I always hear mixed opinions these days. I obviously know that excessive drinking is not good, but what are your thoughts on having a few beers on the weekend? Um, I think a few beers on the weekend with a meal is fine. Um, I think it's, I mean, if you're just having a few beers because it tastes good with your food, I think that's fine. If you're going out to get hammered, uh, probably not a good idea. Um, I think, I definitely think that al alcohol has a negative effect on training and on your gains, but uh, I think it's a lot of it's the lifestyle. So someone might want to go, uh, they start, you know, Saturday night, 5 p.m., they start pre-gaming, uh, they head to the bars around 9 or 10, they're up till 2 or 3 in the morning. Um, so all that time, they're not drinking any water, they're not eating, they might stop by, you know, Taco Bell on the way home and get some shitty food. Um, they're up all night, they're not sleeping. 
So I think it's the lifestyle that really affects your gains. Um, you know, you wake up the next day, you're tired, you're dehydrated, you got Taco Bell gut rot, you just feel like shit. Um, I don't, the beers definitely contribute to that, but uh, again, I think it's the lifestyle associated with drinking. But a few beers with your meal, there's nothing wrong with that. I had a couple beers last night. All right, Nicholas Arsig asks, what would you do for quadricep tendonitis? Um, to take care of quadricep tendonitis means you have, I'm sure you know this, but you have some type of damage or inflammation in the quadricep tendon. Um, so ice, rest, uh, and take anti-inflammatory pills. Um, that's gonna be your best bet. But I wanna talk real quick about uh, anterior knee pain, uh, any knee pain on the front of your knee. A big mistake that a lot of people make is trying to treat the pain at the site. So my knee hurts, I'm gonna put a brace on it, I'm gonna put you know, a stupid runner's band around it or something like that. Uh, when often, the, your, your knee uh, is not the cause of the pain, it's just the site. So you might, the cause might be actually down to your ankle joint or your foot, uh, but more than likely it's up in your hips and your glutes. So there's some type of tightness up here that's radiating down and you're feeling the pain in your knee. So um, foam rolling, um, and I'll show you real quick a couple drills that I like to do uh, for your hips and glutes um, that I think will really uh, help with knee pain. All right, so I like to do with a foam roller, roll out your uh, glute max, uh, your glute maximus. Um, I like to put my leg up like this to kind of hit the glute medius up top. Um, what this also does is it stretches the hip rotators. Um, so doing this uh, will break up some tightness in your glutes. Um, for the front of your hip, the hip flexors, the, the TFL, the psoas, I like to lay on top like this, and roll around, uh, kind of twist my body around to find where that tightness or trigger point is. Um, I like to get on my side like this. Come around here, John. And hit my IT band up and down like that. And then I also, a part that's often neglected is your adductor and uh, your VMO or this teardrop uh, quad muscle. So I go here, I put my leg out at 90 degrees. You can come up. And then I roll this way. I'll go in thirds, closest to my, to my groin, and then middle third, and then out here. And I'll, I'll get the outside like this. And then also, obviously, rolling out your quad. So here, right on top, I roll it again in thirds. So top third, middle, middle third, and then the bottom third, the quad. So if you're experiencing any knee pain in front of your knee, anterior knee pain, doing those is gonna help a lot. So. All right, so Michael Taylor asks, when using a five times five program for deadlifts, squats, and bench press, should there be a warm-up set? If so, how much? How much rest between each set? Should the first set feel easy, or should the last set be as challenging as the first? Thanks. Uh, yes, absolutely, you should always warm up. I don't care if you squat 500 pounds, I don't care if you squat 100 pounds. You need to warm up. Not only does warming up uh, get your heart rate up, and get some blood flowing, um, loosen up your joints and all that, but it also helps you acclimate to the weight. So if you're going to 225, rather than just throwing 225 on the bar and going for it, you can slowly start with 95, 115, 135, 165, 185, and slowly get used to the weight. Um, if I was to warm up to 500 and I put 500 on my back, it's not gonna feel nearly as bad as if I were to wake up, walk in the gym, throw 500 pounds on my back, because I'm not acclimated to that weight. Um, so it's more of a mental thing. Um, but it also greases the groove for the movement. Um, it might take a little while for you to feel that bar path, feel the movement, feel efficient um, in whatever you're doing, bench squat or deadlift or overhead press. Um, so yes, it's very, very important to, to, uh, to warm up. Um, as far as rest in between sets, um, I would rest as long as you need to rest to uh, accomplish the next set. So I would much rather have someone do five by five with 225 pounds and it takes them an hour to do and they complete all, all 25 reps than someone trying to rush through it in less than 10 minutes and failing. Um, rest as long as you need to rest to get the set done. Um, 
I'm gonna backtrack for a second and go back to the talking about uh, warm-ups. Um, warm-ups are also a part of your training. So you can get volume out of your warm-up reps. Um, just because you're doing five sets of five does not mean that your 10 reps with the bar, 95, 135, 185, 225, all your warm-up sets, that's all part of your training. So you use that to get a little bit more volume. I know that Jesse Norris was recently a super trainer and he made a video about he'll do 10, 12, 15 reps with like over 75% of his max on his way up to maxing out um, in the gym just because he likes to get a lot of volume in. Um, so don't under underestimate the, the importance of warm-up sets. All right, so Tom asks, a lot of trainers give the advice of retracting the shoulder blades while deadlifting, but I also see a lot of people with a rounded uh, middle and upper back. Is that health risking? Um, all right. So first off, you should not deadlift with your shoulders retracted like this. Your shoulder blades should be down in your back pockets. So tightening your lats, bring your shoulder blades down. Don't try to pull them together like that. Um, but as far as deadlifting with a, a round upper back or middle back, um, there's, a, there's a difference. If you see someone starting to deadlift, a beginner starting to deadlift, and they start with a neutral back, they pull, and their back starts to round like this, their upper back. That's because their back is weak. They cannot support that weight, or they don't know how to engage their upper back. When you see a lot of uh, advanced deadlifters, people pulling, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred pounds um, with a round back, they're doing that to put themselves in an advantage. So rather than pulling the bar here, they're rounding their upper back slightly so they don't have to pull the bar as far, right? So it's a shorter pull to round your upper back over and finish here. Um, in that case, those people don't have a weak upper back. They're pulling seven, 800 pounds. Their, their back strength is not in question. Um, they're putting themselves in that position. And if you're gonna do that, I think that uh, getting in that position to start and proper breathing and bracing as you pull, I think it's okay. Um, but movement during the deadlift should be avoided. So I hope that makes sense. Mr. Kavtoy says, tell us about workout programs, full body, upper body, lower body, days per week, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know what to say. There's all kinds of programs. There's uh, two days a week, three days a week, four days a week, five days a week, six days a week. Um, so there's all kinds of frequency squatting. Some great squatters squat three times a week. Some of them squat, squat bench deadlift uh, once a week. Um, some of them do it multiple uh, throughout the week. So there's a hundred ways to skin a cat. There's not one way to get strong. A lot of people respond better to, to different training frequencies. Um, so yeah, there's there's a bunch of, uh, all training programs vary and there's not, I don't think one is better than the other. It's whatever works for you. All right, Herman Roloff. Do you ever get sick of people making jokes about your beard? Also, what's your opinion on Zercher deadlifts? Um, about the beard? No, I don't, I don't care if people make comments about the beard. Um, I don't, I don't have my beard because I think it's cool or because I think it makes me look badass. I don't think that I have a beard and I'm more than a man than you if, if you don't have a beard. Um, I don't think it's attractive. I don't think ladies like this. Um, the only reason I have this beard is because when I got out of the Marine Corps, I said, I want a beard and a ponytail. And when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Um, and I, I don't do things half-assed. So the beard and the ponytail are still going strong. Zercher deadlifts. I would never ever have someone do Zercher deadlifts. Um, I've seen it done before. Zercher deadlifts, for those of you who don't know, is barbells on the floor. You get down and you put your arms in the, the barbell and crease your arms and then you stand up with it. Um, I don't think it's a very good idea if you do it and you, you can do it safely, that's fine. I think Zercher squats are good, but deadlifts are kind of unnecessary. Uh, Harris Taylor asks, I don't have access to a gym are calisthenics good in the meanwhile for strength building? What's your take on that? Uh, yeah, if you don't have access to a gym and you, you want to do body weight stuff, um, that's good. There's some like prison workout book about all body weight exercises. Um, you see like the Bar Stars guys, those guys are jacked. And uh, I don't know if they lift weights, but I know they do pull-ups and a bunch of stuff on monkey bars at like a, a park or a, a jungle gym. 
but if you want to do strength training um, and you don't have access to a gym, strongman training, dude. You can get old tractor tires, you can find some old kegs, fill them with sand, do presses, carries. Um, you just got to get creative with it. So strongman training or yes, body weight, uh, calisthenic stuff will work. So, yeah. All right, Mr. Chesterfield asks, what do you think about squatting every day? Would you adapt? Yes, um, if you're able to squat without any pain or without any existing problems, you could squat every day and make it work. Um, right now I'm training five, sometimes six days a week. Um, I, I do squats three times a week. I front squat uh, once a week. I do cleans pretty much every day, some variation, which is you know, front squat out of the bottom. I do uh, snatches some type of variation every day. So um, I'm doing overhead squats. So yeah, I'm squatting six days a week um, and I'm, I'm doing fine, I'm getting stronger. Um, so yeah, it, it would work. Um, it all depends on your set and rep range and percentages and uh, style of effort, whether it's heavy repetition or speed work. But yeah, some people squat every day. Um, I mean, maybe not seven days a week, 24 seven, but every training day they squat. And so yeah, it could be done. Just good food. Huh? That's it. <laughs>